The Major League Baseball cheating scandal sending shockwaves around the world. The owner of the Houston Astros fired the team's general manager and manager after an investigation found that the Astros cheated by stealing signs during their World Series championship season. Neither one of them started this, but neither one of them did anything about it, and that's how, how we came to the conclusion. We need to move forward with a clean slate, and the Astros will become stronger, a stronger organization because of this today. Now, they would have been suspended for a season anyway, even if they hadn't been fired. Joining me now is legendary sportscaster and MLB Network host Bob Costas. Bob, thanks so much for being with us. I think every baseball fan in America yesterday, when this ruling came down, had the same response that I did, which was, wow. But just so our CNN viewers, who are used to maybe impeachment in Iran and other things, right. know what we're talking about. This happened more quickly than impeachment, Absolutely. by the way. In, in 15 seconds or less, what is stealing signs and why does it matter? Stealing signs has always been part of baseball. And if you do it by your wits and powers of observation, it's gamesmanship, it's not only allowed, it's approved of, you're applauded for it. But by using anything outside of that, by using technology, even back in primitive days, uh, they used to use telescopes sometimes from the center field bleachers and some sort of makeshift signaling system. But now the technology is so sophisticated and ever evolving, who knows how much more sophisticated it'll be next week or next year, MLB and other sports have to get ahead of it and draw a very decisive line in the sand, which Rob Manfred, the commissioner, did yesterday with his penalties. And then Jim Crane, as you said, doubled down by firing both Lunau and um, A.J. Hinch. Very clear that if you use technology, once the game is underway, technology is part of yep. modern sports. Cameras, studying TV, video, all that, all that stuff. Yeah, look at it this way. You can do anything you want within reason to prepare to take the SAT. Mm -hmm. But when you go in to take the SAT, none of that technology comes with you. Whatever you've learned and studied prior to is one thing. Then you've got to take the test. So once the, once the first pitch is thrown and until the last pitch of the game, the idea is no technology. The signs are to figure out what the pitcher is going to throw. And if you know yes. what the pitcher is going to throw, chances are you have a much better chance of hitting it. Not only to hit it, but to lay off of it. Right. Because the idea of non-fastballs is deception. So if you're, if you're looking fastball and you're fooled, then perhaps you chase that pitch. So it's not just what you swing at, it's what you don't swing at. And now the Astros, Major League Baseball found, didn't just steal signs mm -hmm. using their wits and cameras yep. and monitors, but boy, they devised this incredible, intricate system. Again, explain what they did. Well, there's... Now a replay monitor in every dugout or down the tunnel nearby because you can challenge calls. And so they were using the center field camera, the shot that you see 95% of the time on a regular telecast. This is, you could also have your own cameras stealing signs, but just the regular telecast of a game is almost always from the center field camera. You can see the catcher's signs, and if you're sophisticated enough, perhaps you can decode them. And so they were using that system to decode signs, and then they had what doesn't seem like a very sophisticated system. They were taking a bat and banging it on a trash can. No bang on the trash can, fastball. Bang on the trash can, some sort of off-speed pitch. And just to put in perspective why this matters in particular, the Houston Astros won the World Series yeah. in 2017, and the Red Sox, who are implicated in a different way, they won in 2018. You're talking about two out of the last three world champions. Yeah, and it could have been all three because the Astros barely lost this past October's World Series in seven games to the Nats. Alex Cora was the bench coach, the lieutenant for A.J. Hinch in 2017. He's implicated in the charges against the Astros. Now he's the manager of the Red Sox. So it isn't just the prominence of these two teams, but also Hinch and Cora universally regarded as two of the best managers in the game. They're both in their 40s, bright, young, very appealing, popular with the media. So this is a very high-profile deal. And what does it tell you that Manfred, Rob Manfred, the commissioner of Major League Baseball, came down with this penalty, which was a year-long suspension for mm -hmm. both the general manager and the manager, and then some you know, really stiff draft pick um, penalties as well. The strength of the penalty, why? Punishment for what was done, but also a clear message as a deterrent. You want to try this? You think the reward is worth the risk? This is what can happen. And something else to watch. 
no players were penalized, even though we know that Carlos Beltran, yeah. who is now the manager of the Mets, or about to be, was in his final year as a player in 2017 and prized for his ability, his great baseball IQ. So he was part of this. Yeah. Manfred said we can't begin penalizing players because almost everybody in the clubhouse knew it's hard to sort it all out. But you have an upcoming negotiation between the Players Association and the owners and, and management. And they might be able to make the argument, I'll try to be as concise as I can here, that ju like just as in the steroid era, yeah. the Players Association lost sight of the fact that many players who didn't use steroids were victims of those yeah. who did. Or they were forced to use against their better judgment just to keep up. So if you've got somebody stealing signs and gaining an unfair competitive advantage, that's hurting some of the Players Association's membership. So you could sit down at the bargaining table and say, you know what, this is an area of mutual interest. We've got to codify penalties for players if they're convincingly involved, as well as coaches, managers, front office people. It's one of the curious things about these penalties, and Ron Manfred did act swiftly, but his investigation found it was the players who were behind this predominantly, yes. not the manager, who, by the way, tried to smash the monitors that were being yeah, used. Yeah, A.J. Hinch knew about it, didn't approve of it, but did not stop but it. But it was the players who were behind it, and not a single player was penalized. That's odd. The rationale is that the adults in the room, so to speak, are the manager, the general manager, the front office people. They are ultimately responsible for the culture of what goes on within their team. But I think if they can figure out a way that wouldn't have them in litigation or arbitration mm -hmm. constantly, because the Players Association has historically been a formidable uh, adversary, if they could figure out a way to codify this, and put penalties in place that would also be a deterrent to the mm. players, they would do it. All right, I'm going to throw a couple straw men at you, yeah. and, I, and I want you to explain okay. or knock them down. Number one, um, why is it the Astros get to keep their World Series here? They won with cheating over the year. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there are pitchers who lost strikeouts. There are stats that were all blown up. Yep. How is it that the Astros themselves don't lose anything? I, I think the rationale and uh, um, the history is, look, we know that the 1919 Chicago White Sox, known as the Black Sox, think of eight men out, that they threw the World Series. At least some of them conspired to throw the World Series. But the record book still says that the Cincinnati Reds are the 1919 world champions. And the record book, look at it any way you want, says that Barry Bonds has more home runs than Hank Aaron. And that Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, and Barry Bonds all hit more home runs in a season than Babe Ruth or Roger Maris. But the fans and baseball historians make of that what they will, even though it's there in stark black and white in the record books. And I think their notion is, look, if we start parsing all this, when does it end? If we pull on this thread, does the whole garment unravel? Uh, with steroids, who was using, who wasn't using, who gained an advantage, who didn't gain an advantage? Did one team have more guys using steroids than another? Almost impossible to determine. And kind of lost in the shuffle in this thing about the Astros and then maybe about the Red Sox, is that the commissioner's investigation showed that at least eight other teams, not as prominent right. and not as successful, at least eight other teams had sign-stealing schemes of their own. So I think um, that Manfred is content with, or at least to this point, he'll, he'll go only this far. We issued these penalties, not just the suspensions, but a $5 million fine for the Astros, and they lost both their first and second round draft choices this year yeah. and next. That's significant. We'll go that far, and we'll hope that this serves as a deterrent going forward. All right. The other straw man is the exact opposite of the mm -hmm. argument I was just making. One of my favorite sayings in NASCAR is, <clears throat> you know, if you ain't rubbing, you ain't racing. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Right. Everyone does this. The argument goes. How would you respond to that? Well, supposedly that was some of the justification during the so-called steroid era. Everybody was doing it. It was the Wild West. Well, that might have some effect on how you judge those who use steroids individually might have some effect to say, ah, he's not the worst person who ever lived. He's a nice guy. He got caught up in it. But if it was okay, then everybody would openly admit it. Right. Why would it be clandestine if, if it was okay? Why didn't people say in 1996, sure, I'm using PEDs. Everybody does. Sure, I wanted to hit 45 home runs instead of 22. Sure. What's the problem? Nobody said it because they all knew that it was cheating. They all knew at some level it was wrong. Why, until Mike Fires, who was with the Astros and since has been with two other clubs, until he spoke with the Athletic, why did no player 
and almost every player in the clubhouse, whether they individually benefited or not, they all knew it was happening. Why didn't anybody say something? Because either if they were involved in doing it, they knew they were cheating, or the code of omerta that generally applies within clubhouses, which is no matter what happens here, we're not going to rat out any of our teammates. We're part of a brotherhood. So they, they know. That the answer to your question is they know it's wrong. And my wife brought up this point last night. You know, we talk about sports. Why do you have your kids play sports? Mm -hmm. You know, you have your, place, your kids play sports to get a workout, to have community. Because it's fair and competition. Cheating stinks. And we now yeah. see it at the highest levels of athletic competition in a lot of different places. You know, no matter, how, no matter how much sports may change, no matter how many things we may find objectionable within sports, at the core of it, if the competition is not credible, if you don't believe in the integrity of the competition, you might as well just go watch the WWE, mm -hmm. if that's all it is to you. So on the one hand, we're going to look at six different angles to parse a call in the second quarter of a game in October, all right? But we're not going to care about PEDs. We're not going to care about stealing signs. You can't have it both ways. This is a question of competitive integrity, and no one should be so naive as to believe that everything in modern sports is uh, the absolute epitome of every all-American ideal and guys on a Wheaties box. We know that's not true, but if you can't believe in the basic honesty and integrity of the competition itself, stop watching. Bob Costas, thank you so much Thanks, for being with us. In education, I think we all got today on all this.